Okay. Um, ionic bonding occurs between usually a metal and a non-metal or um, metals and non-metals. Um, you can also have um, polyatomic ions included in that where you have a polyatomic ion like NH4+. Plus. So that plus applies to everything here in the brackets, meaning this nitrogen um, and hydrogen group, so all five of these particles, are collectively sharing this positive charge, okay? So this is called polyatomic um, because poly meaning more than one, atom meaning atoms, and then ion uh, meaning it has charge, okay? So more than one atom having a charge. So these atoms collectively have a positive one charge, okay? Um, again, in ionic bonding, electrons get transferred from one atom or group of atoms to another. So we're going to start off with a simple example, sodium chloride, or sorry, sodium chloride, which contains sodium ions, or I'm sorry, yes, sodium ions and chlorine ions. Now, when these two particles come together, right now I'm showing them separate, um, and they're going to come together and they're going to bond. Now, when they bond, um, sodium will give up its valence electron, okay? It has one valence electron, and chlorine has seven valence electrons. So sodium will, will donate this valence electron to chlorine, so that chlorine now has a full shell, and sodium has given up its outer shell, which then basically exposes a field shell underneath that. This goes back to ionic stability. Sodium is going to be more stable if it loses one electron um, to be like the nearest noble gas, which is neon. Um, and then chlorine is going to be more stable if it gains an electron to have a configuration like argon. So sodium loses, chlorine gains. When this happens, we end up with the result that is the sodium is now, we're just going to, once it loses its valence electron, we're not going to, we're not going to draw any more dots on sodium. Um, but we are going to indicate that it is positively charged. And then this chlorine, which has now gained an electron, so has a field level. Okay, we're going to just fill that up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And it is negatively charged. Okay. So the sodium becomes positively charged. The chlorine becomes negatively charged. And this is sodium chloride. This is table salt. Okay. Another example um, we might do is magnesium and oxygen, which makes magnesium oxide. Magnesium has two valence electrons, and oxygen has six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Magnesium is going to lose valence electrons, and when it does, it Oxygen is going to take those in to fill up those two single spots. So then they become pairs. Magnesium having lost two electrons becomes positively charged, positive two. It's lost two electrons. And oxygen gains two electrons to have a negative two charge. So Mg2 plus and O2 minus or minus 2. Now in the handout, you can see that I've just, the difference between the handout and what I've been showing you is I've been um, putting the brackets around those. Um, it's, n it's not wrong if you don't, okay? Um, it's fine to do this uh, either way. I've, I've done it here like this. Um, I could have even, instead of drawing these dots, sometimes you'll just see it written like this, Mg plus 2 and then O minus 2, and that's it. It would be done. Um, it would not include the dots. All right. 
let's do one which is a little bit maybe more of a trick. Um, aluminum and oxygen, aluminum oxide. So that's going to be Al2O3 is the formula. Um, and we can deduce this formula even if we didn't have it, we could still figure out what it is. Let's go with Al and then O. So we're going to kind of look at this from two different angles. Each aluminum, I'm going to go ahead and draw out the valence electrons in the form of Lewis dot diagram. That's what this right here is, is a dot diagram. Aluminum has three valence electrons and oxygen has six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Aluminum will give away the electrons because it's a metal and that's what metals do. They're losers, they lose electrons and oxygen will accept those. Now oxygen only has two vacancies. So aluminum uh, still wants to give away this one electron, but oxygen does not have any more room to take it, which is fine because what we realize is in a sample of aluminum and oxygen, we don't just have one aluminum and one oxygen. We have billions, trillions of those. So we're just gonna draw another oxygen one, two, three, four, five, six, and let aluminum donate that electron here. Now, once he does, this aluminum is happy and this oxygen is happy, um, both of which have taken care of their valence electrons. However, this oxygen still has a vacancy. Again, just like before, when we realize that there's plenty of oxygen and aluminum available, we're gonna draw another aluminum because we still need to fill this vacancy with another electron. So we're going to draw another aluminum and it's going to donate an electron to oxygen. So this oxygen is now happy. However, this aluminum is not happy. So draw another oxygen. So just keep basically going back and forth until you get, um, until you get finished really, until everybody's happy and you don't need to draw anymore. Um, aluminum donates again here. And then here, which means this aluminum is happy and so is this oxygen. So when we look at that, we ended up with two aluminum plus three ions, each gave away three electrons. And there were two of them in total, so two. And then we ended up with three oxygen ions, which each had a negative two charge because they each gained two electrons. So we ended up with two aluminums and three oxygens. Now, when we write the formula for this, the actual formula would be aluminum two, oxygen three, which is exactly what I said um, from the beginning. We were gonna end up with two aluminums and three oxygens. I just knew that based off of, um, I already, I know their charges. And then the, um, the process to get those um, Lewis structures drawn and transferring of electrons led me to that conclusion as well, okay? So whenever you're transferring electrons, you're going to have a metal that loses electrons, and you're going to have a non-metal that gains electrons, okay? You're gonna have a metal loser, which is gonna transfer out. Just make sure that you show your arrows where it's going and from where and which from where it left. So it's leaving aluminum going to the alum or oxygen. Um, so make sure that you do show your arrows. So they have a starting point at a electron and show just show where they're going, okay? Um, and then in your final product, make sure that you show the charge on each particle and how many of those particles if there's more than one, okay? So there was two aluminums each with a plus three and there were three oxygens each with a minus two.